discover the 70s swagger of teenage rebels and the Fisher King of the Backwards Clan that found their way back through the forest after uniting with our strange masters from the planet Mufidra on this episode of Graphic Metal. <laughs> Heads, welcome to Graphic Metal, where metal is celebrated with design in mind. Today is our top picks from April and May 2024 for the sector of heavy power or symphonic metal. So grab your hairspray, lighter, it's time to party. Hellish Expectations by Midnight, a heavy metal slash black punk album released on March 8th. Well suited for its name, it sounds like rough gasoline from two cars in a heated car chase at midnight with at least someone in one of the two cars holding a Motov cocktail. <laughs> it's a crossover album between punk, black, and heavy metal. It sounds evil. And sets the mood quite well, but it definitely gets repetitive and it lacks too many memorable moments with only about three songs standing out. Graphic Battle Rating gives it a 75. <laughs> Legacy of Murphydra by Coventhrow, a power metal album released on March 15th. If you've been in need of some just classic power metal with soaring vocals and super cheesy sci-fi story, Ark, then look no further. The band who are from Helsinki, Finland, technically formed in 2009, and this album, their debut was created over a 13-year span from 2010 to 2023. So this is a long time coming. It's a space opera concept story arc set along Mufridra, a planet which comes under attack by the space pirate Skavens. The Morfridian government enlists the help of a young hero to yield their ancient weaponry and tech to become their avatar, so to speak, who will then go seek out the Galactic Emperor and Princess Celeste for their elite military forces and pilots called the Nova Burst to save them from enslavement by their imperialistic invaders. <laughs> Ken, this is what you gotta love about power metal. It only found <laughs> here is the, the cheese worthy of adding on top of your popcorn at a movie theater. So ultimately, is it worth it? Yeah, I'd say so. It's pretty strong, actually. If you like the, the Savage Store by the, the Midian Chronicles I highlighted in, in the March episode, uh, you know, they're pretty, they're pretty similar-ish. Uh, also, obviously, like Nightwish. You're, you're going to eat this up. Graphic Metal Rating gives this one an 86. Slowly fading light. 
Grey Hawk by Thunderheart, a power traditional heavy metal album released on April 2nd. A power metal band who is taking the new wave of British heavy metal moniker to heart, even going so far as taking the iconic branding of bands like Riot and Budgie and so forth. In their case, they're using a hawk to depict on all their albums. The production, it's not the best, but the vocal, song structure, and musicianship are all impressive for a new-ish kind of band. Recommended for fans of Judas Priest, Angel Witch, Riot, and other power metal newer bands like, like Sabaton. Graphic Metal Rating gives this one a 76. <laughs> Rock a Rump by Corpaclani, a Viking power metal album released on April 12th. The Backwoods Clan Lati Folk Metal Masters found their way through the forest to give us yet another disc. They're 12th now for quite some time. When I have been having a rough day, they're, they're here to, you know, guide me back to cheer me up ultimately i i guess it's the combination of their like upbeat positivity almost like punk like delivery and the uh, the accordion and violin gets me every time uh typically opting for folklore togetherness and talking about various creatures and figures of bravery l store fans out there this or they owe a lot of their current success to these lovable bastards who formed all the way back in 1993 and are arguably the first face of folk metal. With them introducing many instruments like violins, accordions, flutes, fiddles, bagpipes, harps, uh, judico, shaham, drums, and, and more. Not to mention chanting. Oh, they love their group chanting. <laughs> One of those old reliable bands where it seems like they never really change. Uh, Jonah, the singer, after all these years, he still sounds pretty darn good, actually. What else can you say? It's more of the same. Not great, but also not bad. Graphic Mall rating gives it an 80. <laughs> Battle Ballads by Tier, a Viking power metal album released on April 12th. The Ferion Fisher Kings of Viking power metal are back after five years. I was always a big fan of this band, who naturally get linked to Amina Marth, not because they're the same, they're actually quite different, but both have you know boosted a hell of a consistent catalog and the whole Viking thing. Though both have shown actually signs of wear and tear as of late. And this one probably might be my least favorite of theirs. The blade is just too rusty now. It doesn't cut through the bone like it once used to. It's a brutal truth to hear, but sad but true. Graphic model rating gives it a 72. Glimpse of the Dawn by Taro, a hard rock proto heavy metal album released on April 12th. Not to be confused with a previous much older uh, Finnish band under the name Taro. This is a newish band forming in 2015 via Australia. With this being the band's third album, though worth noting that it has been eight years since their sophomore release. Best described as early hard rock 
think Atomic Rooster, Wishbone Ash, Nazareth, and Sabbath meets New Wave of British Heavy Metal. In particular, this album really makes me think of the band Dust, who had two albums in 71 and 72 that I cannot recommend enough. Taro used those eight years wisely. Soothing vocals, drum fills, a harmoned organ, and warm but punchy production. What is not to like? Major shout out for the interstitial instrumental songs that add another layer in depth to the album as a whole, and it even boosts a strong album cover that, you know, feels like, like the spirit of dark prog. Uh, also important to note that despite the clear inspirations, this band very much still stands alone and feels unique. This is the album of April for me. No weaknesses or bad songs. It's steeped in 70s swagger when boost many moments that make you just go, oh, fuck, yeah. For fans of Uriah Heep, Deep Purple, Jethro Tull, and Rainbow. Graphic Metal Rating gives this one a 92. Dark Sky Sanctuary by Freeways, a hard rock heavy metal album released on April 26th. First playthrough, I didn't like it and thought to myself, well, it's not nearly as strong as their, as their, as their debut. But I have to admit, this sophomore release has grown on me with each new listen. No beating around the bush. It's good fun for classic rock and early heavy metal rockers. More specifically, 70s, think UFO, Thin Lizzy, or Budgie. They treat the genre with love and respect, just like you would with a cabin in the woods. Graphic Metal Rating gives this one an 82. <laughs> Silver Romance by Freedom Call, a power slash heavy metal album released on May 2nd. We all have at least one of those bands that we just secretly love without ever speaking about it, at least out loud, for fear of the dreaded eye roll. <laughs> Give me them over Dragon Force any day. I just love their dedication to melody and that, you know, like great balls of fire, attitude, good times, vibe that Jerry Lou Lewis would do for rockability. I mean, just one look at that album cover, and I think it's safe to say that you know exactly what you're getting yourself into. Graphic Metal Rating gives this one a 78. <laughs> Phantoma by Unleash the Arches, a power slash symphonic metal album released on May 10th. I've been obsessed with this band as of late, falling in love with their previous two albums in Apex and Abyss. With Abyss in particular being on repeat and one of my favorite albums of 2020. I talk a lot about the value of exploring and evolving. So I have to applaud them for continuing to push that and evolve because it's worth knowing that they easily, easily could have just done another Apex or Abyss, but they decided to keep going on the path of exploration. And I deeply appreciate that. But here's the thing. Unfortunately, the nature of exploring, you never know where it's going to lead you 
or the reaction awaiting you. This exploration, sadly, it's not working for me. Personally, it's it's a step backwards. Here are here are my reasons, okay? Number one, the production and mixing, it leaves a sour taste in your ears. The whole time listening to it, you just can't help but feel like something is off. Add fuel to the fire with the most recent AI controversy that they themselves also found themselves in the middle of. And you just kind of can't get away from the pondering thought of wondering how much AI was involved in this. I'm not saying that it was at all. I'm just saying that the production sounds off. Number two is it lacks the things that establish themselves as a powerful new force. Melodies, riffs, and epic battle feeling. Outside of Give It Up, Ghosts, and Green and Glass, the album is weak. One of the biggest criticisms of power slash symphonic bands like Epica and Unleash is that they all have this desire to create this powerful dynamic between beautiful operatic singing and aggressive baritone screaming. In theory, bad ass. The problem is none of them seem to have a strong enough screamer to pull it off. And while listening you are just kind of on edge on your seat, just praying, please, please, the, the singer, just the, the guitarist who wants to scream, just don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Oh, God. He did it again. Ugh. Apex and Abyss smartly just cut it out almost completely for good reason. This one, they brought it back. Uh, Britney Slays is, is not the problem who continues to stand high on the pillar of metal today. But adding those like bizarre sound effects and layering to her voice just ruins the enjoyment of even her, which is a major problem for this band. Number four, Identity Crisis. I don't know what this album is trying to do. It's like they wanted to explore the 80s hair metal scene but we're too afraid to commit it all the way and as a result it's like drinking half and half number five i applaud them for wanting to continue writing epic concepts but timing is everything and this was a really bad time to release a story with a story art concept revolved around ai no one wants to hear about it right now. It's bad enough that everywhere we go, we have to hear about it. I'm also not a fan of this album cover. I get what Dusty Peterson was trying to do, but it just comes off as bland and uninviting. Even the bonus EP, which is included, if you decide to spend the extra cash and get the deluxe Phantoma uh, Earth book, would, it would have been better. But nonetheless... I honestly do not recommend this album. They strip the iconic nature of themselves a little bit too much. I hate the aggressive yelling, screaming, being back. The production is terrible. And that AI connection thing rubs me the wrong way and leaves me with a complex uncertainty, right? That feeling of unknown. Uh, I brought it in here just because I know that it's a popular band these days, and I, I have loved them, like I said, come, leading into this. I just This one really was a disappointment for me. Graphic Battle Rating gives it a 62. Strange Masters by Zigzags, a heavy metal slash punk album released on May 17th. Hell yeah! We zig and zag our way between traditional heavy metal, doom, grunge, and punk on this one. This is like a fusion between Sabbath, Ramones, Motorhead, Social Distortion, Nirvana, and Death Can, all rolled into one. Or, to use one of their own songs, it's punk 
fucking metal. <laughs> And it's the album of May for me personally, without question. What's also badass about this band is actually how they got their name. Guitarist and singer Jed Mahew and drummer Bobby Martin were both wearing the same cheap shoes when they were first talking about the idea of starting a band back in 2010. Those shoes were zigzags. And they thought to themselves, hmm, well, if we're going to do this, we should call ourselves the zigzags. Indirectly, could they have possibly known that it would absolutely be the perfect name for them? I love everything about this disc. From the title of both the album cover, each of the song titles, and the lyrics, and the originality it presents, and the energy, and the mood, the vibe it makes you feel. This album was meant to be played before, during, or after a party. Here's to the Strange Masters... Graphic Model Rating gives this one an 88. Sounds of the Forgotten by Witherfall, a prog power metal album released on May 31st. These guys busted out onto the scene with vengeance unleashing a hell of a debut that grabbed everyone's attention both from prog and power metal circles back in 2017 they come via los angeles and showed additional improvement on each of their next two discs which leads us here to number four what i find per- peculiar on this one is how much that they have evolved to sound like former prog metal band in sixth even vocalist joseph michael sounds at times an awful like mike mikey goodman at which i mean is, is downright impressive other bands that naturally come to mind with this one of course is sabotage and symphony x but i gotta say at this point i feel like they've definitely paved their own new path which is why i'm a little disappointed in critics out there complaining about this album great bands evolve great ears expand with them here's to them continuing to explore wherever their hearts desire so far i have no reason to not trust where they're going graphic model rating gives this one an 84 Teenage Rebel by Nestor, a retro glam slash heavy metal album released on May 31st. Heck yeah, I'm ready to bust out the hairspray, fanny pack, and original Nintendo for this one. And don't you dare be embarrassed by liking this one too. (laughs) I get it, it's not going to be for everyone, but come on, this is just so much fun. It's vibrant, it's got silky wet memories coming with it, which... You know, I wish that they had tightened up the the cover photo editing a little bit better on 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 the on the, the cover art. But I love the concept direction because it instantly captures the the vibe and what they're trying to go for. And bonus points for them cleverly using the idea of having the album title uh, on each of the back designs of the sweater and the jean jacket. Pac Man, Gresky, and Weaver would would be proud of this one and hot damn go napalm records for supporting this act we wouldn't i wouldn't have thought (laughs) i only bummer was was you know discovering this this band sadly is not a new band actually they they formed back in 1989 but were dormant until kicking it back up in 2021 as such 
I don't know about seeing him live because oh, it would be pretty awkward to see a bunch of middle-aged Swedish dudes trying to play this live with a straight face. <laughs> Actually, uh, to me, that's why glam and punk were, were never realistically going to succeed for a long time because the moment that the members reach over 40, it just feels weird. Like, regardless, you want to remember the 80s. When you were Teenage Rebels, right? This is the album for you, for fans of also Night uh, Flight Orchestra or any age retro 80s. Crack of Metal Rating gives this one an 82. And that was the list. Here are some of the other subgenres and other videos. And check back soon for the continuation of the rest of the subgenres of rock and metal album picks for April and May 2024, coming very, very soon. Until then, cheers and keep on rocking.